Okay, what we're going to talk about now is the two rein. It's another part of the process of making a bridle horse. Now what I do is to start off with on a typical colt, when I come in from making a circle, I don't just turn them loose. I hang them. Now hang them, this is what hang them means when I talk about hanging a horse. The rope is loose and they can put their head down where it's comfortable. What's going to happen is that the horse holds the bit in his mouth without a curb strap or anything else. So that's how this starts off. Now this is typically after about a year of riding in a hackamore. So the horse gets comfortable holding the bit in their mouth just standing still so there's no other things added to it. And this is a process like everything else. So this is how it starts. Now I just make a leather head stall. I don't use the metal bit hanger because I don't want it to swing so easily like a pendulum. I want a little bit of drag on it now. So it'll slow it down enough to where the horse isn't scared of it. Because a colt will flip it and they'll find out real quick that's not a wise thing to do so they'll start to get quiet and for people that tell me they want to make a bridle horse but they're they've got terrible hands well if you do this you don't need your hands you just hang the bit on their head and leave them alone and that that's about this is step number one of getting a horse prepared for a two rein thank you when you're done hanging your horse and getting ready to unsaddle them, turn them loose, or now this can be 20 minutes, two hours, or four hours, doesn't matter. All you got to do is figure out the temperature and if your horse has been off of water, just use your head. So when I'm done and I take this bridle off, this horse is also learning to let go of the bit. Now this is a half breed. And the only reason it's a, I'm using a half breeze is because my spades are already rigged up on another head stall. But it's the same theory. So when you get done hanging your horse, you take the salt shaker, and while the mouthpiece is still wet, you put salt on it. Now you hang it up, and then tomorrow it'll be crystallized, and that'll invigorate the horse to take the cricket and roll it. So just so we're clear, if you're making a spade bit horse, you don't have to use a half breed. You can use a spade. All right, now the two rein, the setup is what you're looking at. That's a two rein setup. The bosalito, by now, you've got to find a bosalito that's going to fit your horse. It's just like the bosal. This one is too long. It's impossible for this to work. If you can see the, the, the buttons all the way down to here, which would mean I would put too much rain on it, I'd have too many wraps, and now it would just do this and not be effective like this one is. So this one is shorter and it fits better. Well, obviously a bigger horse with this will work just fine, but not on this horse. So this is what it looks like. If you want to make a bridle horse, they have to be broke to hobble. If they're not broke to hobble, then you're going to fight your head on this stuff. You're not going to have the accuracy and the outcome that you want. And there's nothing but benefit coming from getting your horse broke to hobble. This happens when you start them as a colt. So the reality of hobbling is, is when I put them on, the horse's brain clocks out. And the horse goes, you know what, I don't have to do anything. All I got to do is stand here. So that's the beauty of it. So in the bridal horse tradition, if you got to get off and do something, you can hobble them and they're going to stand. If you're some, you don't tie bridal horses by the reins. If you take the bridle off and tie them by the bosalito, they're going to rub the head stall. They're going to get in trouble. So you learn to teach a horse to hobble and stand comfortably wherever you are. You know, because everybody traditionally, when you go to a Brandon, if you're not roping or working, you got your horse hobbled and turned loose to eat grass. Well, a bridle horse, you hobble them, but you tie your reins up because they don't need to eat grass. They get fed at home. So now this horse can't put its head down to eat grass. This is the way I would set my horse up if I was pulling the calf or got off to 
sit down and visit or whatever I want to do. This is what it looks like. There's enough slack in the rain where the horse can stand bridled up, but it cannot put its head down and get in trouble. Okay. Something else I'd like to share with you is that when I ride a horse outside and I'm getting him used to the bridle, when I go, I don't have the, the curb strap is completely off. There is no curb strap, okay? If you can imagine, there are no chains. It's nothing more than the bit hanging in the horse's mouth. This is how I ride them off the Bosalito. Going over hill and dale, because I ride outside, the horse learns to balance the bit at a trot, walk, lope, whatever you're doing, mainly trotting. It learns to balance the bit in its mouth and you don't have the responsibility of worrying about pulling on its mouth because you don't have any reins on it. And I know this is different than most people do, but for me, this is what's worked out over the years for me to get a horse to not resent a bridle. If you're worried about your technique and your hands again, don't have any reins or chains, you can't pull in their mouth. So this is how I set that up. Now, if anybody has been around this, you'll know that typical rain chains are about this long. Well, what happens in reality, since I have a swivel down here, is I keep adjusting these chains, taking links out, I take a bread wrapper or a piece of bandle wire, and you tie the chains together and shorten up the reins or lengthen them until I get that perfect scenario, what I've told you about before, which is position one outside, position two, roping, and position three, working cattle. So after six months, however long it takes, I just add links. I use the full length of the chain or else I just keep taking links out until I get that perfect distance. This bridle is for this horse only. It doesn't fit on any other bridle horse, that's it. So this is where you make up the difference in how to adjust your reins, that's where it's done. Thank you. All right, the position of how I hold the two rein for schooling, ride and say they're open. What I do to start off with is I'm more bosalito than I am bit. So that means that the reins for the bosalito go on top. So now that puts them high and the spade bit rein short. So now there's contact. So I put the macate through my two fingers so that when I pick up on it, there's no pressure on the romal and everything is done off the bosalito. And this is how I would work the horse. Now, if I needed to, I can reach down and use my right hand to correct the horse but I got to tell you that very seldom comes up because if you've done your homework and you've spent the time all you're doing is literally transitioning from the bosalito to the bit if that horse can't turn around off of your seat then you've missed a big part of this so I pick up say excuse me I ask my horse to disengage I ask my horse to walk backwards. I ask my horse to side pass. And the, the rain, the Ramal rain, isn't a part of this scenario. You spend so much time riding these horses in the Bosal that they're just fine with it. They've been packing the bit, so they're not threatened by it. They don't resent it. So over time, I just let the rein slide through my hand and I start getting equal. Sliding. Pretty soon, whenever that is, depending on the horse, I've made contact with the reins and I pick the horse up. So now I'm outside and I'm making a circle. I put the Makate on the bottom now. And I just drop it over the saddle horn. And I'm out riding. 
and I can make a circle, and I sit down, my horse stops. I'm no longer on the Makate. I've transitioned. Now how long it takes for that transition is up to you and up to your horse. It's, I can't give you a date or a time, it just doesn't work that way. But something I do want to share with you that you don't do, which I've seen, is that if you're roping and you've got a two rein setup on, you ride that two rein. You can still hold your rope because if you drop your makate over the saddle horn and you happen to catch, when you dally, you will dally the makate in the dally. Now you have just betrayed your horse and you are in fact a dink. So you don't do that. There's no problem setting this up to hold it plus roping. There's my palm concho, my reather lays right there, my rope. I can put them even, I can shorten it up, I can trade, I can do whatever I want to do. No problem. Horns clear to dally on. So, what you do is you just transition from less of this and more of this, and then you're done. Now on this, the two rein thing, I've already told you several times, five people, five opinions, I'll give you mine. I don't ride a two rein setup very long because I ride a horse for a year with a bit hanging off their skull. So they've already balanced to it, they, they're comfortable with it, they actually want it because they love that roller and the cricket. So for me personally, if I have the right kind of horse, it may be two months in a two rein, it might be four months tops, and then I'm done. I don't keep a two rein on a horse for years because I feel comfortable that my horse doesn't need it anymore. It doesn't need the bolsolito. I just use it for a get down. I just, I'm, the way I do these horses is that they're listening to my skeleton and I don't need it. If things all fall apart, then I just simply go back to the bolsolito. But if they don't fall apart, I don't, I don't see any reason to have it. It's just more things to get in trouble with, get in the way, and you just don't need it. And I gotta tell you, just like what I learned with riding Hackamore horses, is that every time I drop down that one quarter or one eighth of an inch, the horse was, relie was relieved. They're going, I've been waiting on you, I'm fine. So believe in what you're doing and then go with your body, and if you feel your body talking to your horse, and you're able to do whatever it is, the job that you want to do, go straight up. When it's all over, that's the way it ends up anyway. Thank you.